So I wanted to show you my initial crochet black lab dog. You can see how I made the eyes a little different. It just has the magic circle where I made a circle and put the stitches around the circle and then placed one of the safety doll eyes into the center of the magic circle. So if you like that method, you can use that method as well. And this one also had a softer yarn. And this yarn is by Bernat. It's called Bernat Blanket. It's a thick, thicker, chunky yarn that's very soft. And here's some more information on this yarn. Now this yarn, you need to use a larger crochet hook with this yarn. The color of this one is coal. It's a super bulky six, 100% polyester. It's about 300 grams. Here's some more information on the yarn, the amount of yarn. Now I needed almost four skeins. I still had a lot left with the fourth skein. And then with my crochet hook, I used a 9mm. And because this one didn't have the soft handle, I would recommend getting a pencil grip and putting it on the end because you don't want to be putting pressure with your fingers onto the crochet hook for a long also, period of time. Also, if you're going to use this large crochet hook with this kind of yarn, there's going to be a little bit of a drag on the yarn. So you don't want to take frequent breaks because it can, the drag can cause a little bit of discomfort in the wrist. So those are things that you need to keep in mind if you want to attempt something like this as well. What I found with this one, which I like but ended up abandoning it as an amigurumi, is because it was so large that I accidentally made a toddler chair. So it makes a perfect toddler chair see the soft cushion on the back so this pattern is similar to my amigurumi lab dog the only difference is I made the body much larger as you can see and then the head also I made larger and the paws and I only made two paws for the front and then I just left the back the way it was so the child can sit in the chair. So it made a wonderful toddler chair if that is something that you wanted to do. And then I just used an alternate yarn for the nose. I like to have a different colored black for the nose. So for mine I used the um, impeccable yarn but Karen Simply Soft would also be a good choice. I couldn't find a chocolate color for this, color, this type of blanket, but I did find a beautiful beige color that would be perfect for a yellow lab if you wanted to make a yellow lab toddler chair. And then if you like the sign that I hung on mine, I just used, you find your favorite sign or picture online, and then you can use these color fast fabric sheets for your printer. They work great as you can see, so it gives you the fabric feel. And this one is by June Taylor. Looks like the, there's a website also. I got these from Joanne Craft Store, but JuneTaylor.com. And here's some information. You can print personalized images. I have a separate video tutorial also that shows how I use this type of um, fabric sheet for printers. So I just wanted to give you the measurements of mine from the front of the paw to the back is 23 inches and then for the cushion from the top of the cushion down to the table is 8 inches and then from the top of the head to the table is 18 inches. If you love this version the toddler chair version. I'm going to have a free written download that will give you the the crochet amount of crochet stitches that I use to make this pattern. So again my Facebook group is Helen May Crochet YouTube channel Facebook group 
and I have a lot of files that are available for download that are free for members. Also, I just wanted to let you know that inside the body I stuffed a whole pillow. So there's actually a whole pillow stuffed in here. I didn't even take it out of the, the stuffing, craft stuffing out of the pillow. So here is the Crochet Black Lab. I love how he turned out and the way I made the eyes. So I show a different way to make the eyes and I actually used a sequin for the pupil and the sequin, what's nice about this sequin is when the light catches it, it will actually sparkle or glitter with the light. So that's a nice feature for these eyes. The Gazania flower has a separate video tutorial if you like how that looks. And his pet outfit also has a separate video tutorial. And on his pet outfit, I made his teal. On video tutorial, I show a pink one and how to change colors. This is his dog tag, and on the back you can see his name, Shadow. And also you can put charms on the collar, too. And this one has a red, white, and blue cowboy boot. His collar, there's a separate video tutorial for the collar, and I teach you a new stitch with that collar. It's the single crochet spike stitch. And then also with the pet outfit, you'll learn a new stitch called the Snapdragon Stitch. I made him a matching hat. This is actually a beret. And I put a pom-pom on his hat. Turned out really cute. Now on video tutorial, I show you how to make a little button on the top of the hat. There, this one also will teach you the single crochet spike stitch and also has the matching Snapdragon stitch in it to match the pet outfit and it turned out adorable this is what his pet outfit looks like on the back and this is what he looks like from behind for his flower I just put a ribbon in place to hold the flower through one of the stitches on the foot and then also a yarn at the bottom to hold it upright now make sure that if you put a yarn on the bottom through a stitch that you make it a different color yarn. You don't want to make it the same color as the paw and accidentally cut when you remove it. You can easily see the yarn to remove it, but if you put the same color you might accidentally cut a stitch on the paw, which would be disastrous for your crochet lab dog. Now when you choose your yarn for your dog, be aware that different yarn choices can make your lab dog a different size. So I'm going to tell you what the size turned out for each of my lab dogs. For the black lab dog, the face across the face is six and a half inches. And the reason I tell you that is because he will fit the sunglasses, which are five and a half inches, and they fit perfectly. Now on the yellow lab, the sunglasses won't fit because the Karen one pound will make your dog a little bit larger. So if you love these shades like I do, then that's the size of the face to fit the sunglasses perfectly. So from the top tip of the paw to the back of the dog is 18 inches. And then from the top of the head to the table is 14 inches. And then from the top of the hat to the table is 17 inches. Now the next dog I want to show you is Cadbury. He's the chocolate lab. And his eyes, I wanted to show you what the safety eyes look like. So if you like the safety doll eyes, I actually used a 20 millimeter brown. You can see the brown in the eye. Really pretty. So if you'd rather just use the safety doll eyes, that's what it would look like on your chocolate or whatever color lab that you make. I used a real pet outfit for him, and this is his Gazania flower. has less petals, so you can see what it looks like with just seven petals. The other one had ten. Attached it the same way. And then he has his name tag, Cadbury, and also he has his little charm. And he has a real dog collar on that matches his pet outfit. And I made his beret match. 
his outfit and his has a little button on the top. I like how the button looks so on video tutorial I show the button. But you could use a pom-pom if you wanted to. And then this is what he looks like from behind. And he also fits the sunglasses which I think are just absolutely adorable. So again, his face is six and a half inches, so he fits the sunglasses. His length from the tip of the foot to the back is actually longer, so he's about 23 inches in length. And then from the top of the head to the table, he's the same. He's 14 inches, and then from the top of the hat to the bottom is 17 inches. For him, I used a Red Heart Chocolate Brown yarn and I didn't use more than five skeins for him. Five skeins of yarn. And here is Graham. You could see her lime colored eyes, just really beautiful. She also has the sequin that glitters in her eyes. Now her face width is larger so she won't fit the sunglasses. So her face width is seven inches across because of the Karen one pound yarn that I used made her slightly larger. And for her, when I made the color video tutorial, I also show how to make this cute heart. So you'll get a cute heart also. And that goes right behind her name tag. And this is what her color looks like if you like that. And then this is her pet outfit. I also show you on video tutorial how to make your own buttons. So on my um, shadow, he has the wooden buttons. And then on her, I made buttons, which um, turned out really beautiful. She has this gorgeous butterfly pin that I put onto her hat. So it's actually a pin. You can remove it and wear it if you wanted to. If you like the pin, I got it from Metal Gallery. Again, this is a close-up of the gorgeous butterfly on her hat. She also has the beret hat with a button. You could put a pom-pom if you wanted to. And this is what she looks like from behind. So for her measurements, she's from the tip of her paw to the back is 20 inches. If you like the pink Toenails, I show how to make those also on video tutorial, on this video tutorial. And then to the top of her head to the table is 14 and a half inches. And then from the top of the hat to the table is 18 inches. And this is what they all look like together. I just wanted to point out the fun thing that I did with their tongues. So you can see how I made the black lab with the tongue straight. And then this one I made pointing to the left. And then this one I made pointing to the right. So just kind of fun thing that I did. You can have fun with that too if you want to. And this is what they look like all together. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need a darning needle or tapestry needle and also a pair of scissors. If you want to put a pom-pom onto your hat, then you can use your pom-pom maker for that. I also show how to make a pom-pom with a piece of cardboard in my crochet owl baby hat. If you're using animal safety eyes for your crochet dog, I would recommend the 20 millimeter size safety eye. If you're going to be making your crochet dog's eyes, like the one that I made, you're going to need some felt. For the black portion that goes on the very bottom of the eye, I had fun with this glittery felt. But you can use a plain black if you wanted to. I also used the same glittery felt for the pupil of the eye. For the color of the eye, 
For shadow, I use this beautiful brown. You can choose whatever light brown color that you want for the eyes. This is the color that I used. For Graham, the lab dog, I use this really pretty mint green for the eyes. I also used this sequin. It's a five millimeter iridescent sequin. You can see how you have plenty of them from Treehouse. And again, it's the five millimeter size. And it says that they're garment quality and washable. To sew the eyes on, I use this Beetalon monofilament cord. And the sizes are here. It's clear, transparent. It works great. It's just a thicker cord for holding the eyes in place. And it fits right through your darning needle or tapestry needle works wonderfully. You're also going to want to get some paper and cut out the portions for the eyes. So this is the bottom of the eye. And you can see how it measures one and a half inches by two inches. If you have difficulty drawing this, I'll have the eye portion only available for download in my Helen May Crochet YouTube channel Facebook group. It's free to join my group and I have a lot of other fun downloads available in there also. For the color portion of the eye, you're also going to have a little cutout piece that measures three and a half centimeters by four and a half centimeters. Then for the pupil of the eye, I made mine two centimeters by two centimeters. So for Graham, on video tutorial, I'm going to be making Graham, the lab dog. I used Karen one pound. The color that I used is cream. And here's some information on this yarn. It's a medium four yarn. This is the ounces, the grams, the meters for those that don't have this equivalent yarn that we have. And again, this is the cream colored yarn. For the tongue, I used a light pink color and mine I used Red Heart Super Saver. It's a baby pink color. And here's some more information on this yarn. You're not going to need a lot of this for the tongue, just a little bit. For Shadow, the lab dog, I used Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo. And here's information about how many meters 681 meters, 744 yards, 396 grams, 14 ounces. And I used this whole skein. It's a black colored yarn. Here's some more information. And I was able to almost make Shadow the Lab Dog off this one skein, but um, I needed one more skein for one more leg and tail for Shadow. So here, I just got a smaller skein, Red Heart Super Saver, same colored yarn. Here's some information on this one. So I still have to make the tail, but you can see I have a lot of the second skein left over. This one is only 364 yards, 333 meters, 198 grams, and 7 ounces. For the nose, for both dogs, I wanted to use a different colored black yarn. You could see the difference in color. You can use the same color black if you want to, but I just wanted to use a different color or shade of black. So this is just 100% cotton yarn, black yarn, but you could use whatever medium four or 100% cotton yarn you want for the nose. For your crochet for shadow, dog. the crochet lab dog's outfit, I used Red Heart Super Saver. So for his outfit, his collar, and his hat, I only needed one skein of this colored yarn. The color that I used was Real Teal. Here's information on this yarn. And also here's the meters, yards, grams, and ounces. Real teal. This is how much of the real teal I had left over after making the complete outfit. Now for his collar and hat, I used two different shades of blue for his outfit. 
And you can use whatever Red Heart equivalent light blue yarn and also a different shade of blue. You're not going to need more than one skein of each. I just used a chocolate colored brown for the um, Cadbury Lab Dog. Then I just used Karen Simply Soft for the alternate colored brown. Even though it's also chocolate, it's a little bit different of a shade for the nose. So for Shadow's nose, I used the 100% cotton black yarn, but for Graham, I'm going to use the Karen Simply Soft chocolate colored yarn for his nose. Sometimes you can find cute things like this at Walmart. This was only $3. I'm going to take off the boot and put it onto one of my dog collars and then use this ring and clip for another one of my craft projects. So you can see how the boot came right off. And now I have a separate clip that I can use for another crochet project. Then I can project. take and just put the clip right onto the dog tag. And this is what it looks like. So the first thing you're going to do is just take whatever color you want, whichever yarn color you want for the main color of your dog. We're going to start with the head. So you're going to take your yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook. Again, I'm using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Go right through the loop. Then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through that loop for a slip knot. Then just cinch the knot down. You can see how the loop is around my crochet hook. Now we're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four of them, but you're going to make a chain of 30. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. Go ahead, finish a chain of 30, and then This is back. what your crochet work should look like so far after completing a chain of 30. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. Then you're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. Make one more with you. So go ahead, make one single crochet in every stitch across, and then come back. So this is how your crochet work should look so far. Then, after you finish your last single crochet in the last stitch, go ahead and chain one. Then you're going to turn your work. You're not going to work into the base of that first chain one. You're going to work a single crochet into the next stitch over. So just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then just make a single crochet in every stitch back across. I'm going to make one more with you so you can see how I'm going into the next stitch. You're grabbing both loops of that stitch. This is what it looks like. Bring up a loop and then make your single crochet. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch back across. And then so this is what back. my work looks like so far. Not counting that first chain 
We just finished our second row of one single crochet in every stitch. Each row has a stitch count of 29. Now I know we started the initial chain with 30, but because we made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook, that's going to leave you with a stitch count of 29 on each row. So you're going to continue making each row. I'm going to make one more row with you again. You just chain one, turn your work, and then again, you're not working into this first foundation stitch underneath your chain one. You're going to go into the next stitch over. You're going to bring up a loop and make your single crochet. So that first chain one counts as a stitch for that row, and this is the second stitch. Then you're going to go into the next stitch, the third stitch, make a single crochet, and you're going to continue working each row the same way until you've completed a total of 26 rows. So you want 26 rows, not counting your initial chain, and then come back. This is what my front panel looks like after finishing 26 rows. You should make two of them, one for the back panel and one for the front panel. I made them exactly the same way. You're going to make your side panel the same way that you did for the front and the back panel, except you're going to start with a chain of 16, and then you're going to make 81 rows of one single crochet in every stitch. So start with the chain of 16 and then you want to make sure because different yarn choices can make different sizes so just make sure that the side panel will line up all the way around the front panel just like this and again for mine I ended up with 81 rows. Now I'm going to show you how to make the snout. You're going to get the same colored yarn. You're going to wrap it across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Then wrap it around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. We're going to make the magic circle. Take your crochet hook. I'm still using the same size crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop. You're going to go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So six single crochet into the magic circle. So I just made one. Two. So I just finished six single crochet into the magic circle. You're going to take your forefinger and thumb and just hold the base of the six single crochet. You have two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close the magic circle, let go and then pull on the other one. Don't worry if you don't get it closed completely. Just close it as much as you can. Then take the loose yarn end and pull on that. Then just turn your work so we can work into the first stitch of the circle. And you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around. So you're going to go into that first stitch and place two single crochet into the same stitch. So I just finished one. I'm going to go back into the same stitch and make two single crochet. 
So go ahead, finish making two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches and then come back. So now I have 12 stitches in the round and you can see how I have a little bit of an opening in the center of my magic circle. If you have that, just turn your work over and then just pull on that loose yarn end and then that will close up the center nicely. Then you're going to take your yarn marker. I'm just using one of my scraps of yarn. Place it right where you left off. Then we're going to start making or continue making our increase rounds and what that means is we're going to be increasing the number of stitches in the round. So for this first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I'm going to make one more set with you so one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. Go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. So now I'm back to the yarn marker. I just finished 18 stitches in the round and from here on out we're going to be making two more increase rounds so you'll notice that it's going to be increasing the number of stitches by six. So for this next increase round go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. For this increase round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so you should have finished 24 stitches in that last round. Go ahead and take and move your yarn marker up. Then you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. And then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. Then go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then for the next increase round go ahead and move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn I marker. I just finished 36 stitches all the way around. This was um, one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. Now you're going to go ahead and take your yarn marker, move it up, and you're only going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. And you're going to do this until you've completed a total of four rounds. So when you reach your yarn marker, you're just going to continue around making one single crochet in every stitch. So don't remove your yarn marker when you get to your yarn marker. And if you're doing it correctly, each time that you get to your yarn marker, you would have still have 36 stitches. So you don't want to increase the number of stitches and you don't want to decrease your number of stitches. So maintain your number of stitches by making one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed four rounds and then come back. You should have completed four rounds, one, two, three, four, of only one single crochet in every stitch and you can see how it forms a cup if you did it correctly. If it doesn't form a cup then you'll need to go back and figure out what your stitch count was and where the stitch count went wrong. 
So now, go ahead and take your yarn marker, move it up to where you left off. We're going to make an increase round. So that means we're going to increase the number of stitches in the round now. You're going to make one single crochet into five stitches. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the sixth stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into your sixth stitch then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so after completing that round you should have a total of 42 stitches in the round so 42 stitches all the way around then you're going to take and move your yarn marker up and again you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of four rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch until you've completed four rounds and then come back. So this is how my snout looks so far and I just finished one single crochet in every stitch for four rounds. Now we're going to make our very last increase round. So go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. And for this increase round you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches. and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. Then go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So you should have finished 48 stitches on that round then go ahead and take your yarn marker up and then for the last two rounds on the snout you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So go ahead and make one single crochet in every stitch until you've completed two rounds and then come back. After you're finished with your two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker. Then you're just going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just take your crochet hook, go into that next stitch over, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, and pull enough yarn through to sew the snout onto the front panel. So go ahead and set the snout aside for now and then get whatever color you want for the nose. I'm going to show you how to make the nose. The first thing you're going to do is just take the yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. I'm still using my same crochet hook size. Go ahead and hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. I'm just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch down the knot. Then you're going to go ahead and make a chain. So I'm going to start with a chain of eight. There's one, two, so I just finished a chain of eight. Then you're going to take your crochet hook you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So go into the second chain from the hook. You want to bring up a loop, make a single crochet, then you're going to make a single crochet into every stitch back across except for the last stitch. 
in the last stitch we're going to place three single crochet into that last stitch. So I'm just going to work this with you. So I'm making one single crochet in every stitch back across until I reach that last stitch and then in that last stitch I'm going to place three single crochet and then I'm going to be turning the work because I'm going to be working in rounds so I'm going to be working in the opposite side so you can see how I'm turning my work. So far I've made two single crochet into that last stitch. I'm going to make one more and then now I'm on the opposite side so this is where we made our single crochets. Now I'm going to go into the next stitch on the opposite side and make a single crochet. I'm going to go behind my loose yarn end make a single crochet and then I'm going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. So you can see how I'm making one single crochet in every stitch on the opposite side except for the last stitch again I'm going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. So I have two stitches left. I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn end before I work my three stitches into three single crochet into the last stitch. <clears throat> so now I'm going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. Then you can get your yarn marker. We're going to start working in rounds. Place your yarn marker right where you left off. Now you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of three rounds. After you finish the first round come back so I'm back to the yarn marker I have 17 stitches in the round if you don't have exactly 17 don't worry as long as you're consistent with each subsequent round and as long as you're close to the 17 now also here you'll notice that there's a little bit of an opening. Don't worry about that because we're going to stuff it with the same colored yarn so you won't be able to see that so don't worry about that. And then you just continue working in rounds until you've completed a total of three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch and then come back. Now after you finish your third round of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and make, you can remove the yarn marker and then just make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the nose onto the snout. Then we're going to take and cut some of your brown colored yarn. Just gather up a little bit of the brown colored yarn and then you're going to use that to stuff the nose. And then your nose is ready to sew onto your snout. So for my nose, you can see how I placed it approximately here's the magic circle of the snout 
about a two rows up. And then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and then just sew all along the border or outside part of the nose. This is what my nose looks like after I've sewed it in place. You can see how it stands up. It's really cute. Now we're going to make the mouth. Go ahead and get the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle. Then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and come from the wrong side of the snout, come out midway beneath the nose. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end on the inside for tying a knot. Then you're going to go straight down two rows. Then you're going to go up to the right a couple of rows over to make a smiley face. Go back down where you came out at the bottom of the nose. Then come up on the opposite side at the same level as the top part of the opposite side of your smile. And then go back down in the same spot in the middle of the smile. And then just tie a knot on the inside. Now I'm going to show you how to make the smile, I mean the tongue. For the tongue, I'm using my light pink colored yarn. We're going to start with a magic circle, just like we did before. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb, just like this. Then take your crochet hook, go ahead and bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle, just like we did before. So six single crochet is four, five, and six. Then you're going to take and close the magic circle just like you did before. But this time you're going to keep it with the half moon shape. You're not going to turn it and start working in rounds and make a circle. So you're going to keep it the half moon shape. You're going to chain one. Then you're going to turn your work. So now you have the half moon facing to the right on video. Go ahead and turn it so that the half moon is facing towards the left on video. Then just take your crochet hook. You're going to go into the next stitch over. Bring up a loop. Make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make two single crochet in every stitch to the opposite side. So two single crochet in every stitch. And you can see how you're forming your tongue. I'm just finishing my two single crochet in every stitch. And then I'm at my last stitch. And in my last stitch I'm just going to make a single crochet. Just one. Then you can go ahead and finish off. You can see how you have your tongue. Go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tongue onto the snout. And then you can decide which side you want showing for the tongue. I'm going to use this side for mine. Go ahead and get your tapestry needle. And I usually start with the center of the magic circle. So this is the long end that I left for sewing and then this is the center of the magic circle yarn end. So I'm going to put that onto the tapestry needle first. And this is where you can have fun. You can decide where you want to place your tongue if you wanted to have it right in the center or if you want it off to the side. For this one I'm going to put it on to the other side. 
So I'm going to go right beneath the center of the smile, or the upslope of the smile on the other side. Then I'm going to take and sew across the top of the tongue only. Then you can see how my tongue looks. It still has a little flap for the tongue, and it's off to the side. Now you can set the snout aside for now. I'm going to show you how to make the eyes. Thank you.